All right, good morning. Uh, my apologies with yesterday's video. For some reason, the scheduling part on the Google Classroom didn't make it want to show up until today. So it'll pop up here in a couple of minutes. So there'll be two videos for you to watch today. Um, plus, I'll, I will extend the deadline for um, yesterday's assignment. Um, and there will not be an assignment today. No, there won't. All right, so um, we talked about, so we've talked about mitosis, we've talked about the cell cycle, so now we're on to the controlling factors of the cell cycle, and then we're going to talk about situations where that is considered abnormal. So um, identify factors that control cell division, identify factors that contribute to an abnormal cell cycle, and then we will talk about stem cells um, uh, tomorrow. Yes. All right. So, as far as controlling the cell cycle, the rate of cell division, so how fast or how slow, really does depend on the type of cells. Now, there are some cells that are dividing constantly. So, things like the, the cells that are inside your mouth, um, the, your skin cells, they are constantly replenishing themselves because you are constantly losing them. And then there are some cells, like your nervous system cells, that they pretty much only divide once and then they're done. So once they're damaged, um, they can no longer be fixed. Um, muscle cells are somewhat in that same realm. Um, if you get like a, a really bad muscle injury, like a torn rotator cuff or a severed tendon, those have to be surgically fixed because your body doesn't have the ability to fix it on its own. Now this is mostly controlled by the presence of another chemical that we call a cyclin. So it's basically a protein that binds to certain enzymes and interphase of mitosis that basically says and tells the cell, we're going to do a round of division or you're going to sit here and wait until I give you further instructions. Now there's another group we call CDKs or cyclin dependent kinases and these are special, those special enzymes that the cyclins bind to. Now this next image, um, this is still the cell cycle, but this is showing you all of the built-in cyclins or the built-in checkpoints um, that are there when the cell is actually going through these steps. So at the end of every one of these, so we have our G1, S, G2, and M phase, there is a cyclin attached to it. And it's basically like a street light. It's a stop, it's a go, it's a you know pause for a moment. Um, and this isn't all of them. If you think about the um, cell cycle in terms of a clock, all right, every little tick is a built-in checkpoint. And then it's like the big ticket items, or the, the big checkpoints are here at the end. So it's basically, all these checkpoints are built in so that the cell can be monitored and alerted if something goes wrong. So if, let's say that during G1, something went wrong and the cell stopped growing. Well, if the cell doesn't meet a certain requirement at the end of the G1 phase, it's going to be stopped from moving on to the next phase. And the same with the S phase. If something happens in the synthesis of the DNA, or it doesn't happen, when it gets to this stage, it's going to be stopped and it's either going to be kicked out of the cell cycle or the cells are going to go on attack mode and try to figure out what happened to that cell and if they can fix it or if they just need to get rid of it. So there's all these built-in checkpoints, but yet there's still situations where abnormal cell cycles and abnormal cells can be, um, can be made over time. So it does sometimes fail. All these checkpoints do sometimes fail. And when cells don't respond to those control mechanisms, we end up with an uncontrolled cell division and the technical term is hyperplasia, but we tend to call it cancer. So this is the uncontrolled growth and division of cells which kills an organism by crowding out normal cells with cancerous cells. So I'm going to show you a picture. So this is a set of cells that have been um, scanned under a electron uh, microscope so that they show up um, in high detail, but then they've also been exposed to a fluorescent pigment so that they glow. Now, 
if you were to look at this, which cells do you think are the normal ones? Give you a second. So the normal cells are the ones that are stained purple. And the ones that are green are the cancerous cells that have taken hold. So you can tell just how different um, they can be physically and their function is entirely different. So they can completely warp an area. Now as far as causes of cancer, um, I know that you guys are kind of bombarded with cancer research on a regular basis, but cancer doesn't just occur in the weak older organisms because it can occur in organisms that are completely healthy, active, and young. We can, you can have cancer at any point in your life, even though it is less common for certain ages, it can still happen. But in general, the majority of cancers begin as some type of mutation or a change in the segments of DNA, and then there is a failure of the normal repair system. So it's kind of a multi-stage problem. So it's DNA problems, but then it's also system check failure. So there are hundreds of different types of cancer, and they range from non-life-threatening to extremely lethal, depending on the cells that are being attacked in question. So here's an example. So these are um, normal cells for the interior lining of your respiratory passages. So um, all cilia and are working to sweep debris and excess mucus away from your lungs. So this is what a normal um, situation would look like. Now, if we switch to a cancerous version, so this one is backed up a little bit, um, this is still the normal cells, and then this is the cancerous cells that have taken hold. So again, um, these cells are going to no longer be able to perform their normal function. They're going to divide, 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 unless something, you know, you get scanned, you get some type of uh, you know, chemotherapy, surgery, so on and so forth. So invasiveness, this is something that we say cancer has the ability, so it's the cell's ability to break through the boundaries, allowing them to get to other cell types. Now, this is a little short video that I'm also going to put a link, um, I'll put this link on with the notes link so that you can watch it a little bit later. Um, some other cancers are thought to now be genetic. And then there's environmental factors that can affect the onset of cancer. So if you know anything about breast cancer research, um, in the last, I don't know, probably 10 years, um, they have discovered that there's a couple of genes in the human body, they call them the BRCA1 and BRCA2 gene, that are precursors to having breast cancer. So if you have, if you do one of those DNA test kits that you can find out your ancestry, they can actually tell you if you have this gene. And if you do, you know, you can, you know, take further steps. But as far as the environmental factors, there's this whole group of substances that we call carcinogens. Now these are things that we know cause cancer. So here's some classic ones. So we know that tobacco products, so using um, cigarettes, cigars, vapes, all of that stuff can lead to lung cancer. Exposure to asbestos, I'm sure you've seen the commercials, um, causes mesothelioma, which is another type of lung cancer. Ultraviolet radiation, so constant exposure to really, really bad sunburns can cause you to have various types of skin cancer. And then alcohol can cause what we call cirrhosis of the liver or liver cancer, among other things. Um, tobacco products can also cause, um, you know, throat cancer, mouth cancer, a few other odds and ends of things. But these are the ones that we know have an effect. All right, so some other characteristics that we can associate with cancer. Um, apoptosis, this is actually a naturally occurring process in your cells. Um, it is a built-in checkpoint, but it can also help to protect you against cancer, but it could also uh, lead to it. But basically, apoptosis is programmed cell death. So if a cell has gone wrong at some point, so think a, a cell maybe didn't um, synthesize the DNA correctly in the cell cycle, it's going to be given a signal basically to kill itself. Um, if you, depending on the book that you go to, um, 
in the college biology textbook, they actually call apoptosis uh, program cell suicide. But there are some benefits to it. So it can occur in cells that are damaged beyond repair. So any of those that would include damaged DNA that could lead to cancer. So this is kind of another built-in checkpoint. Um, but it can also help um, organisms from developing cancerous growth. So it can help inhibit just that uncontrolled cell division in general. Um, another term, angiogenesis. This is when um, cancer cells are introduced into the blood cells and then they are carried out to the body, which is really um, closely related to the next term, which is metastasis. Um, this is when cancer cells spread or they become metastasized and they collect in the blood and the lymph nodes. So if you hear somebody um, say that they have metastatic breast cancer, it means that the breast cancer has broken away from the breast tissue and gone into the bloodstream. So any type of cancer can get to this stage and this is usually like a stage three, stage four type situation. Um, it's a lot harder to treat because it is being carried all over the body and it's not localized, but it is still treatable. So we are going to stop here for today. Um, again, don't forget you have multiple videos to watch today. Um, so be sure that you get all of those um, taken care of. And I will talk to you guys later.